and welcome back to Speed Stuff for Trans Lives 2. I'm Zoka, but it's my honor to be your host for our next couple of runs. And folks, if you're just joining us, we've had a fantastic weekend raising money in support of the Equality Texas Foundation. If you haven't heard of them before, the Equality Texas Foundation seeks to educate, motivate, and activate all Texans to end discrimination based on sexual orientation, gender identity, and gender expression. And in this time, especially, that's so, so important. So if you would like to donate, type exclamation mark donate in chat and follow that Diltify link because you can also apply your donation to various bid wars incentives. And I gotta let you know, coming up our next run, Half-Life Alex does still have a bid war open. You can choose what our runner Starry Ari will write on the whiteboard, but you don't have a lot of time. Your options are trans rights, turbo lesbian power, and well, what's this? But again, uh, Turbo Lesbian Power is in the lead. And if you want something like trans rights or ooh, what's this on that whiteboard, you don't have much time. And at the same time, you can also go ahead and put that donation towards our rendezvous with sounds for the Delta Rune run coming up right afterwards. That's a twofer. And you get to get that money over to Equality Texas. So you know what? Win, win, win. And we love that for all of us. Thank you so much for bearing us with us while we were working through tech issues and sorting stuff out. I don't want to keep you all waiting any longer. So without any further ado, here is Half-Life Alex, No Major Glitches, run by Starry Ari. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm Starry Ari and this is Half-Life Alex. I'm joined here by hi. Lemons. <laughs> Lemons, say hi. <laughs> And let's get into it. Don't worry, timer's not going to start yet. <laughs> uh, yeah, so first thing you're seeing, this is a VR game. I'm, I'm in my VR space. Uh, if you see these, this grid around me, this is my play space. If I go beyond this point, I'm going to hit something and break something in my room. So we're not going to do that. <laughs> um, this game has a lot of cool movement and a lot to see. So uh, Lemons is going to be taken over for most of the commentary as she knows way more about this game than i do i simply run it yeah. so <laughs> all right so yeah first thing you'll notice this is no major glitches but a lot of the things may seem kind of major but not in this game because there's a lot of stuff that's major <laughs> so what we're limited to in this is number one ammo duping seems very huge but it's really not that difficult or different given that there's ammo everywhere in this game people in vr tend to miss a lot of shots <laughs> with your gun so you have something to be reloading with if you don't have that then you can't really play the game sure all right i'm gonna start the timer soon so ready for the timer three two one go With with the, all the glitches, one thing you're or the, another thing you're allowed to do is mantling. Which, if you've played the game, you know. Wait a second, mantling is part of the game. That's intended, and you'd be right. But the devs only have it used in two parts of the game, intentionally. After that, they don't care about where you use it. They didn't look over anything. You could use it pretty much anywhere. Get out of bounds really doing anything and the devs just kind of oversaw it but what we're limited to with this is only using it to get to places just a little bit easier if you go out of bounds at all you can't use it any like you can't use it to get out of bounds you can't use it to just go through walls which you can do it's that's really it that's all the glitches right like pretty sure that's all you can yep. use yeah, and the first map has been pretty self-explanatory, it's the intro map. Every Valve game always has the, the really easy intro, mostly just walking around. The only thing with this is we do use mantling to get up onto like a, what's it, it's like a balcony kind of thing. 
And then if you walk around IRL, you can teleport to places that the devs wouldn't quite expect. But it is that we call Cat Lady Skip, it is still inbounds somehow, but it is inbounds. Technically, it's not major since you can get there without really any glitches. And it's just waiting for these guys to do you. They do that. <laughs> they shoot you, they shoot the button if you press it in time. Yeah, that I scanner, like uh, if, if, if you touch the scanner for whatever reason, it will, uh, it will go away faster. So that's why I was touching it. <laughs> <laughs> that's really all for this map. It's just done, really. Yep. So no the incentive. The oh, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> no, go for it. Go for it. The the incentive will be ending pretty soon. So, uh, if you're a last chance donator, want to change what I'm going to write on the whiteboard, now's your chance. <laughs> <laughs> so when I get out of this car, we're going to have to wrap it up. <laughs> Where are you taking me? Yeah. So what I was on about with the whole load zone is. The, the game uses adaptive load zone, so depending on where you are in the game, like, in this part you didn't see a map in front of you because you have no clue what's going on yet, but once the muscle in the room ahead debriefs you, or not debriefs you, but just normally briefs you on what you're going into, where you want to go, and like where everything is basically, the map will adjust in the loading screen to where you are in the game to show you just how close you are to the vault. And like, normally for this cutscene, in like every other category, we use glitches to just teleport out of the van. But unfortunately, we're stuck using no glitches. Unfortunately, <laughs> we'll have some fun tricks and skips later, so don't worry. <laughs> but uh, this game with glitches is done in like a little yeah, over ten minutes or something. Minutes. It's pretty crazy. <laughs> and we're actually going to be using mantling again. Or what's it Yeah. I don't even know what to call it, but I just call it drone skip. Yeah. I call this Fair ladder enough. skip. <laughs> but you just mantle up onto some onto the fence and you can teleport skip the uh, whole cutscene where you have to wait for There we go. <laughs> Russell to stop talking. And you might be hearing me talk about Russell. You might be asking who is Russell? And Russ. <laughs> That's Russell. <laughs> okay, what's the whiteboard? Right. Uh, we need that now. With a whopping $35 lead, sorry, $30 lead, I can do math, I promise. Turbo lesbian power is what you are writing. All right. Russell, <laughs> but thank you everyone for those donations. Again, these are all going to Equality Texas. And okay. It all helps so much. Have to look at them. And this, this game is meant for good interaction with the world, so like, having a whiteboard here is really, like, it's amazing for, oh, cat is going crazy, sorry, <laughs> but it's amazing for development of VR games, just how in-depth all the physics are and how well the whiteboard works, really. Amazing, <laughs> amazing what you can do with modern yeah, technology. Yeah, it, it really feels like you're actually writing on a right board. <laughs> I need to get on that train. That's it. Yeah, so this is one of a few cutscenes. If there's any donations or anything, now's a good time. <laughs> so I, I, I'm fascinated about how you're erasing the whiteboard with your hands. Um, <laughs> we just closed our big war for, for turbo lesbian power. <laughs> um, <laughs> but we do still have is. another donation incentive open, and that is rendezvousing with Sands, uh, with Sands in Delta Room. The next run, we're at five dollars out of our hundred dollar pool, and we need to meet that uh, in order to meet with everyone's favorite Tumblr sexy man, the Skeleton Sands. So that's just ninety five dollars away. Exclamation mark D or donate in the chat if you want to get that link and send some donations over to cheer on this fantastic job that our is doing mantling through this world. <laughs> uh, fun thing you'll notice with if you grab the gloves gloves early, which you can do, Russell's animations become desynced. 
So you hear him talking, and then only a few seconds after is when you'll actually see his action. So what you'll notice is the gun just kind of appears on the car, which is pretty fun. And then I think the ammo is also kind of iffy because that you actually have to wait for Russell to catch up on and throw it to you. Since he always throws in a random direction somewhat near to you. Oh, good job with the camera. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but he the always throws it at you, so it has to be constant with or er, has to be in sync with the animation, so we end up having to wait through that. Which it's just something I look at really. And just that entire map is incredible for like, the development of VR. Yeah, this game is really great at like starting with with the base set of ideas and then building on them as you play through the game. Like in that first mission, we learned mantling, we learned ladders, we learned you know, the, some sort of the basic basic movement, and it's really going to be built on throughout the rest of the game. So, really cool. Um, I, I would jump into this, but I don't want to. It, it might be a yeah, photosensitivity yeah. thing, so I'm not going to. But if you jump into this door, it will yeah, teleport you back to where I'm standing over and over, and it's very funny. But uh, it, it is like kind of a flashing light, so <laughs> how about we don't? It's pretty fun. It's mostly just teaching you like the intro to the okay. open world <laughs> aspect. Even though it's not really open, you're kind of restricted in the path you can go. The multi-tool is also introduced here, which is pretty fun. It's It just kind of lets you do more puzzles with the game. This game is meant to give you some hacking puzzles, which usually you can see when you have to unlock doors, hack different mines. It's really cool to see it. We're going to see it here oh. in a second whenever <laughs> Sorry, I opened the terminal and has to do a puzzle. With unlocking, like, I don't even know what it's, I just call it a supply pod most of the time. But you open that, it's a pretty cool animation. Here you have to open the vault and do another puzzle. The game loves puzzles. It's, it's really cool just going through the first map. The, the first few maps are really cool for showing off what the world can do, what the game can do really. And as we get further into game, that's whenever it gets a lot more complex, as you might say. Oh yeah, if you're seeing if you're seeing this, this is uh, where I normally keep my splits. So I often will just instinctively will pull this up, but I put this here instead because it's funny. <laughs> Did you hear that? And this next map, this is where we get to really feel the movement. Because we get, this is basically just learning how to teleport around. Yeah. It's the first interaction with zombies and headcrabs at the later part. But it, for us, it's mostly just trying to maneuver around the zombies and just generally being able to react fast because sometimes the AI gets in the way and it's really infuriating. <laughs> I have to wait for a yeah, headcrab here. Yeah. Here we're stuck waiting for an animation of a head crab jumping through the fence, which sometimes it plays okay. like, <laughs> but it's fine. Sometimes it needs time. We'll give it time. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't know. It's, I, sometimes I feel like the head crab jumps immediately, and sometimes it just takes forever. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. And here we get to meet the second animated character that, like, second close-up animated character, where. We get to meet the Vortigon, which will pretty much give us the guide on where we need to go for the next, or for the foreseeable future, really. It's, it's, it's really cool, because you get to toy, like, there's a little secret hideout, underground, hidden away, having his own little kitchen. Really cool, because he has pet of head crabs. <laughs> which, which once, once again, you can interact with. Just amazing for <laughs> <laughs> God. it's amazing what you can do because like, if you point your gun at them, one of them will hide because one of them's scary, or one of them's scared rather. Another one will just like, kind of 
puff itself up because it's confident. Another one just got its heart ripped out, but <laughs> that one had the little unfortunate end. That's uh, yeah, so real quick, during this, uh, I'm going to be doing a bit of ammo duping, as you see here. Um, oh, here we go. I currently have 90 in reserves, but by pulling ammo out of my backpack and quickly switching hands and putting it in my backpack with the other hand, I can duplicate ammo. It's, it's like, seriously so easy. It's, easy once you know <laughs> it's I don't know how this got into the game. First, but yeah. once you understand what it is, it's really easy. Works with any kind of ammo, except for the shotgun shells. And... Yeah. yeah. The shotgun is the very annoying. <laughs> so I have to look at whoever, well, whichever NPC is starting the cutscene usually. Um, so that's why I'm standing here looking. <laughs> but once it starts, I can do whatever. A lot of the animations in this game, especially with the the cutscenes are triggered by looking at the NPC that's doing all the cutscene stuff. Like in the first map, you have to look at Russell to um, make him start talking to you. You have to look at you have to look at the Vortigaun at the start of each thing, like each room. What? Really, a whole lot of actually doing stuff. It's pretty fun. Yeah, so speedrunning like a VR game like this is super unique, unlike anything else I've ever done. Uh, my my usual speed game is Paper Mario for the Nintendo 64, and uh, this is quite a change from that. <laughs> a lot of people are kind of scared off by VR speedrunning, mostly just because of how how complicated it seems, really. But things like category in HLA is really fun because if I can, there's not many glitches. It's pretty calm, honestly, compared to other runs. You have and saved there's not a whole lot of people right now. So, it's not really, like, super competitive. Although, I'm more than happy to like, just get more people into it. I will happily look into anything <laughs> I have to for this game. Yeah, I started this game pretty recently, and Lemons was very, very helpful. Why? <laughs> okay, thanks. Are you done helping? I am Another thing you might have noticed there was there's a lot of invisible walls. Like, so much of this game is just held <laughs> off by invisible walls. Yeah, it probably plays more a part in the uh, the more glitch-heavy categories, but uh, in this one, we only run into it a couple times during cutscenes, and uh, yeah. while doing some weird mantling stuff. Alex, Alex, the signal's back. Can you hear me? Like, this map okay? is the introduction to batteries and armored head crabs, for the moment at least, and also the shotgun too. But this is one of the maps that people fear the most, just since. There's so much dark spots later on. And it's really fun. Um. <laughs> yeah. Well, like, that was weird. <laughs> a fun little thing with the shotgun is really as long as you grab it from the zombie, you don't have to. You don't have to pull the zombie back up. You can just grab it as he's falling down. No need to wait the extra ten seconds to reel him back up. But. Dude, for the rest of this, it's a lot of fast movement. Then you get the flashlight. And once you get that flashlight, you spawn a whole bunch of stuff. You have poisonous head crabs, more zombies. And as as Ari is going back, you realize they run into a lot of zombies, which is mostly just because they didn't kill them as they were running through here. Which takes a lot of maneuverability to uh, run past them. Yeah, I, think I don't know if we've talked about barnacles yet. Uh, <laughs> those tentacles hanging. <laughs> uh, I'm dodging those because they will pull you up, and hopefully we will never see what that looks like. But <laughs> that was a really good segment. <laughs> oh yeah, it was. Good job. 
aside from whatever the heck happened with the shotgun I know. <laughs> no idea uh so we have another new enemy coming up um very shortly the man hack the man hack is probably one of the more it's one of the cooler enemies in my opinion at least just since kind yeah, of I love them. Aim. Like, they don't do a lot of damage they just move really fast and it just like they move really erratically too so it's more just like skeet shooting and it really shows off how how well done VR shooting can be. And it's really satisfying when you shoot it. It always like, explodes and has a ton of electrical sparks. It really it feels really satisfying almost Hello? every time. <laughs> so I turn these with my left hand so I can jump with my right hand. A uh, little optimization that saves a lot. Oh my gosh, that was death. <laughs> <laughs> Um, all right. Well, that's what happens when you die. <laughs> a, thing, a thing with this game is, you, if you take, like, there's a lot of differences between life and death. Like you could take a four foot jump, but you go to four feet one inches, you're dead. Yeah. <laughs> it's really. And uh, when you're jumping, there's a indicator that shows uh, like where you're gonna land, and if it turns red and has that skull, it means that you are going to die. So uh, later on, that will be very important. In here, uh, Ari has to shoot that particle through to really tight cross beams, which is a really great shot. And then grab the valve from under the fence, which is really difficult. Yeah. Can be finicky. The, the shots themselves <laughs> are really difficult. And then on top of that, you have to grab it, which is just really finicky. But other than that, you need to skip through that entire Zen section. It's pretty fun. Yeah, that that section is really hard done like without that, uh, without grabbing the thing under the door. There's tons and tons of explosives everywhere, and uh, and barnacles everywhere that will eat the explosives and then blow everything up so you have to really be careful in that section but by doing that we can yeah. skip it which is very cool <laughs> next thing we'll hear already oh. <laughs> is there are a whole bunch of combine which are we saw earlier in the first map but now they're actually going to shoot you since you have a gun and you're not supposed to be where you are you're supposed to be there in the actual game but they don't want you there. So they're gonna shoot you, but Arya's just gonna run right past them. Because they're really good at the game. I'm going to kill a couple of them that <laughs> cause problems. <laughs> um, I want... Nope, I want that. Yeah. And the Oops. puzzle here, oh my it's gosh. the same every time, which you can make <laughs> it pretty fun. If you like Once you get everything in the memorized, it's really... <laughs> It's really fun, and you can make it look really cool when you just do the entire um, puzzle in like two seconds. Which, in here, it's kind of similar every time. It's another kind of puzzle we have to do with the multi-tool. And right now we have to stop the train, so turn off this console by putting in the battery. Um, getting, like, I don't even know what it's called, I just uh, call it the <laughs> wheel. Yeah, I have no <laughs> idea. <laughs> and you have to put it in the puzzle like we saw in quarantine entrance earlier. Um, and line everything up and stop the train. There we go. It's really as simple as that. <laughs> so there are some dudes here that I'm going to need to shoot. Since, since they didn't kill them earlier, they can just run up to you. And they, don't, they can't really shoot through well, so they're not going to shoot. Until they get line of sight on you. But you have line, on, line of sight on them at pretty much every point, which is pretty fun. Yeah, um... There's the train. <laughs> it's uh, very loud. <laughs> Uh, 
And then yet again, we have another cutscene where you have to, yeah. Yep, another cutscene coming up. And this time, there's nothing really of importance or okay. interest. I'm gonna reach out and pull you it's just plot okay. armor, really. You ready? This pun. Give me your hand. No, if we have any <laughs> donations, this is a great time for it. Reach, reach. All right, well, I do want to let you know they started calling for a turbo lesbian power. I gotta emphasize, turbo lesbian power! It's in all caps, I'm sorry. <laughs> a donation train in the chat. So if you want to hear about that, again, now is an excellent time. I do have a $20 donation from Anonymous, who, who is calling for a turbo lesbian power train. And that donation is going to both the Rendezvous with Sound uh, incentive for Delta Room, again, the next one coming up. And also, we've just opened a bid war where you can choose the character that will be used in the rolled out run later today. Your options are Morris the Rat, Snow Cone the Chicken, Chartreuse the Giraffe, Guava the Koala, oh, that's a fun name, and Rook the Field Unit. And I, I've got to ask. Ari Lemons, do you have a preference? So just hearing the names, knowing nothing else about the game. Personally, I can't <laughs> say I do. Dad, where's the vault? Uh, sorry, I, I am having a hard time hearing you right now <laughs> with the cutscene going on. <laughs> Not a problem. Beam is more important. Um, just... <laughs> but if you have a preference, chat... Uh, Lemons may not, and, and, and Ari, Ari's got a game to focus on, so we're not going to pester them about it. But if you have a preference chat, you got to get those donations in, and remember, you can put them both towards both an incentive and a bid war. You just have to make sure to select them when you donate. Thank you! Hey, Russ, keep an eye out for Dad, okay? Here is another kind of puzzle that we have. It's basically just kind of like playing a memory game. Just have to line up the colors on the orb really yeah it's very forgiving <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's forgiving at the start and then as you get later on in the game the, every puzzle starts to get more and more difficult which it's really cool but it's kind of annoying later in the run when you have to do everything under a little bit of pressure you know it got a bit messy back there but we did get dad back This map is actually the first map in the game where it's an entire chapter of the game. So, the game is divided into 11 chapters, where usually it's two or three maps, but as we get further in the game, the maps start getting bigger, and they just start being full chapters, which is pretty fun, but... It ends up having less of a brick between things. Luckily here we have an elevator that gives us like 10 seconds of free time. And if you don't look out the window here, it's a pretty fun little kind of, what's it called, dialogue that you can hear. As Russell says, look out the window, and Alex <laughs> refuses to look out the window. But it's, it's a little, it's funny to hear. Yeah, here we're also introduced to grenades, which are pretty fun. Oh, yep, that's a barnacle. That's a barnacle. <laughs> and grenades. <laughs> self explanatory. Was trying not to yeah, see any of those are today. Everyone knows what grenades does. Grenades do. These ones, cool, because they're orange. They explode red. That's really nice. Yep. And here you get to have a fun little aiming test. You have to get the grenade into the fight. Definitely an advantage if you're in North America for this. And we're also introduced to the, the Combine Charger, which has a huge gun and it's very armored, which you'll notice right there. <laughs> and there's a whole big fight scene, a whole bunch more enemies spawn, but because we're speedrun, we can just run right past them and only half of them spawn. It's pretty fun. Okay. <laughs> so this is the mission where things start ramping up. <laughs> um, so and I'm actually. To go to the menu. Oh yeah, you can explain this if you oh, like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So there's a bug that tends to be like 50/50 if it happened in the next map, where if something happens earlier in the game, we haven't figured out what it is, 
but we have to go to the main menu and start a new game from where we ended up there. Which ends up giving us a whole bunch of shotgun ammo. Takes away some of the pistol ammo, but you get a decent amount of stuff from it. As well as having a full health refresh and no possibility of the bug happening. Yep. So we'll, we'll mention when the bug like would affect yeah. us. <laughs> Other than that, this map is pretty self-explanatory also. This is a cool skip. We get to have, we get to use more mantling that the devs entirely like miss. Yeah, you're we supposed to do a puzzle up. with that elevator. Um, yeah. <laughs> Not yeah, today. You're supposed to use that battery too, but you can save it for later where it would end up taking an extra minute to fight a lightning dog here. Which... Alex calls them a lightning dog, in game they're just called revivers. Should make sense because they end up reviving stuff later, which is pretty Hopefully annoying. Hopefully, we will not do. see them reviving yeah. stuff. <laughs> if yeah. all goes as planned, we won't. <laughs> yeah. And at the start of this next map is where you can really see the progression of the puzzles. Yeah, this where puzzle's hard. <laughs> earlier, earlier, you saw there was only like three colors. Now there's four colors and a barrier, so you can't cross the barrier at all. They both have to be on uh. the same hemisphere, and it's really difficult. But with enough practice, you can get all the lineups right. And it's, like, this is one of the more difficult maps because we have so this. what they're going to do. Yeah, it's a whole bunch of really precise teleports. This is where the bug would come in, because you'd end up sliding everywhere. And you can't teleport when you're sliding around for some reason. But, but you go up here. This is still in bounds somehow. Because technically in the game, you're not out of bounds. Ah, dang it. You're basically supposed to be here. Oh, no. <laughs> That's one of those things where if your hand wiggles just a little bit, then you'll, you'll die. <laughs> yeah, that's... That's why they're super precise teleports. They're, yep. they're really precise, and it's kind of annoying. That's a big reset but, point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> As you can see, I am trying to stabilize myself. Uh, stabilize my hand with my other hand, which usually works. But, uh... Sometimes there's a little bit of shakiness as you release the jump button. Oh. You got this, I believe. There we go. And you can grab ladders Perfect. through walls, so that's why that yeah. works. <laughs> yep. All right. Uh, yeah, a lot going on in this next mission. There, this is a uh, this place is full of head crabs and the, the poisonous head crabs. Does this have a name? <laughs> yeah, those things are very annoying and they are everywhere. Yeah, this map is pretty fun. A lot of just fast movement until you get to the the real open area with all the poisonous head crabs. And normally you'd have to backtrack. To you have to go through a wall and most of the time you don't see that it's blocked off. So you have to turn off the power, which you just go straight to it. You don't have to go up and have the misfortune of going back down. And then after that, oh yeah, we also get the SMG here, which is really high fire rate. But we have to deal with the reviver soon. It's not fun. Because one... Oh, Having that to is very much one, not fun. <laughs> fine, you can get done with it quickly. But here we have two, which makes it a lot more difficult because you have to you have to be quick with killing both of them. Otherwise they're gonna revive stuff. Yeah, the alternative is if you're not quick, just don't kill any other enemies, and surely it won't happen to you. But um, <laughs> um Here they are. Where do they go? Um, 
Yeah, and the shotgun doesn't deal much damage to them for whatever reason. Yeah. Don't know why. Okay, I'm really trying to avoid killing them. Uh, and the SMG deals a lot of damage, so I'm gonna wait for him to jump around. Yeah, there he goes. Uh, so, usually in where did it go? Mm -hmm. There it is. There Perfect. we go. Okay, not too bad. Oh, and these things are, like, power cells. And the, the rivers drop them, so... Just gotta solve this puzzle real quick. And on to the next part. That wasn't too bad. Those revivers are so annoying. <laughs> but thankfully, I think it's the last one we have to fight. There's no more from there. <laughs> Definitely my least favorite enemy in the game. <laughs> and it's not close. <laughs> And here we have a. We have to shoot down all the substation wires, which will release the Vortigon locked inside, which is powering all the Vault substations. And with that, there's a pretty cool cutscene, so. You have time for donations if you have any. Alright. Yep. Well, just an update. Uh, <laughs> that character bit where it has twenty dollars currently to Guava the Koala for rolled out later on, which also means that Sans the the Sans incentive is a quarter of the way there. That's twenty five dollars out of a hundred dollars. That run is next though, You're and that's it's okay. Mm, Your friend sent you. math. I, I don't like math. Math, my greatest enemy. That's a little under an hour away. You want to get those donations in. And again, all of this is going to, to Equality Texas Foundation. Um, if you're able to donate, Equality Texas and the Equality Texas Foundation work in tandem to secure full equality for lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and queer Texans through political action, education, community organizing, and collaboration. So if you are able to donate and, of course, apply your donations to our incentives, uh, it would help so, so much. But even if you can't, we appreciate you so much uh, for being here and supporting us by watching the show. We have to stop them from killing your friends. The Vortigon will extract ourselves and exact our own Are, can, can I just ask, are you juggling? <laughs> uh, it's duplicating oh, oh, cartridge? ammo. Yeah. Oh, it's duplicating ammo. Yeah. It's, it looks really weird, and it, it yep. is, <laughs> but you get a whole bunch of ammo out of it. <laughs> looks like I'm eating it. <laughs> Oh. Like when, when I popped in in the chat earlier, I got to see you pull a bottle out of your glove pocket. <laughs> so, I the sky is the limit for what you can do yeah. here in Half Life, Alex. There's <laughs> a lot you can do. Thanks. Good luck. Um, okay. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Mostly, you have to kill both of the man hacks to actually open the door and progress. But behind the door, there's a whole bunch of combine. But if you just run past them, they're set to play animations before shooting. And here, pretty difficult to get up onto the balcony, walk around the edge. And then teleport without getting shot. Which, yeah. Which oh, that was really, really good. <laughs> I'm surprised. But other than that, um. it's just movement. A bit untangling. <laughs> yeah, that uh, that sequence is made very short by that uh, <laughs> that skip there. Which is so cool. And now we're on to another one of the single map chapters, which it's pretty fun. And honestly, this is probably my favorite chapter in the game, just given how much fighting there is and how much everything is used in the game, really. Like buttons, every gun, grenades of every kind, fighting. Grit mines are introduced. No, they're introduced in the last map. I forgot. But this map has everything. 
Yeah, I know they're introducing uh, no, that here. last map, but they used a lot more. Yeah, it's in the Wait, whole are? apartment thing we skip. Yeah. Oh, it's the thing we skip. Ah, that's why I don't remember. Because I haven't played this game normally in so long. The combine suppressor just kind of disappears since he doesn't like us. And then he tries to pitch us from a different point, but we're too fast. And then this, yeah. Uh, this is a cool skip. We skip this room by jumping. It's a casual route that wasn't really intended to be that easy. Oh. Now ladder. Yep. You can grab it through grab walls. Grab through walls. Skip out of the kill zone. <laughs> it's great. And here's another huge fight scene that you can also skip by just running past them. There's a lot of times that that's just oh. what you can do. Yep. A lot of enemies are like programmed to run to a location, and then you just use the time that they spend doing that to like. <laughs> yeah. Um. Run past them. <laughs> and this is the trip mine. Since we're seeing trip mines, we're coming up on what is essentially the biggest. Yeah, we call it the boom room. The boom room. Because there, it's littered with bombs, <laughs> trip mines. It's got everything. And yeah. So I'm gonna do a There's little a bit really of safety strat, strat and get this and one. Basically, oh, okay. like playing Mission Impossible, you gotta run, run through everything. Yeah. But with this, it's a lot less risky. Granted, there's still risk, but. It's it's a lot safer than all the other stuff. <laughs> Crouch under that one. Yeah, that's a really cool room. <laughs> this ladder, blast that guy, and then we get to skip a puzzle here's, here. Yeah, here's another oversight of the mantling. They just completely oversaw. You can skip a huge puzzle. That was a good segment. A whole bunch of fighting. It's just kind of funny. Yeah. <laughs> so now we're on to everyone's favorite mission, Jeff. Oh boy. <laughs> I'll let Je Jeff speak for speak for himself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, let's just say we don't want to be very close to Jeff. <laughs> we're not yeah. friends. Yeah. Jeff can hear, but he can't see. We don't comment on what he looks like because we know. But, <laughs> but there's a few things we can do here. Like we're gonna use the fact that all damage is only just non-existent sometimes, and just abuse it really. Just Watch me being a scene where Jeff shows off that he's deadly, which which is pretty fun to see. Yeah, you got to watch me be a terrible shot there. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay, there we go. <laughs> Ladders are weird. Thing to note with Jeff is his kill range is only so far, and we're gonna abuse that, so we don't have to lock him in the freezer like you normally would. And we can instead just spin the wheel that you have to spin from the other side, which is somehow just outside of his kill radius. And we don't have to worry about that. All you have to worry about is covering our mouths so we don't cough. Yeah, then he, he will, will come kill you. <laughs> and if you're close to him, he will kill you. This is another part of the game where the devs are trying to scare you, and it scares a ton of people. I don't blame them. It's terrifying the first time. But we're speedrunners. We're, we're used to this by now. So, you could just we're used to everything here. We don't, we don't really get as scared unless Jeff just randomly glitches and jump scares us. It's uncommon. But, yeah. Yeah. He's definitely capable. expect capable. you to have super high heart rate, be super on edge. But if you're not, this is, this section's really easy to just breeze through. 
kind of calming too. Yeah. <laughs> it may be this section. The next part is much, much harder. <laughs> All right, now he's in. Press the button. And now we get to chill for a second. So if there's a donation to read, I, now's I, a good time. I'm, I'm sorry. I, you, you two, if you are still calm going through this, and I am horrified. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is very scary. <laughs> um, if you're just joining us, please don't be scared. Uh, Speed Stuff for Trans Lives 2 is run by Speed Stuff for Charity, uh, which is a speedrun marathon team dedicated to annually raising money for charities. We've raised over $15,000 in our eight years doing marathons, and we plan to continue for as long as there's interest. Oh, that, 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 that. Is that they were really interested in whatever's in that wall. Uh, we've previously benefited St. Jude's, Doctors Without Borders, uh, the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention, um, and lead, Leading Efforts Against Drugs. This time, we are benefiting the Equality Texas Foundation. And so... Uh, if you are able to donate, we do have two incentives uh, open right now. A rendezvous with sound incentive for Delta Moon that's coming up right after this run. And of course, the character bid more for rolling out. Uh, so, so, sorry, rolled out. Gotta get that name correct for rolled out, which is which is like a super monkey ballish game, a marble roller, if you're not familiar with the genre. So go ahead, get those donations in. I'd love to hear from some of you. Yeah, you'll notice that Ari is correct collecting three batteries, which we have to use to power the... I, think, I don't even know what to call it, like the, the plug for the tunnel. And Jeff doesn't like that the plug makes noise, so he's gonna bust out and get yep. us in. it's these guys that make the noise. <laughs> Oh well, I guess the, uh, what's it called, the, the alarm is making noise right now, but... And then once he, once he's done bashing that in, and it's not making noise, you can trap him in a trash compactor, where you can either hold mercy on him and not kill him, and he's just trapped there till the end of time, or you can kill him, and he's just dead. What do you think, Lemons? What should we do? I think we kill him. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> uh, okay. There's a little window of time where I basically won't lose any time by going to kill him. So I'm going to use it right after I do this. Die. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> really weird that happens sometimes. There's some parts where there's just not a platform for a long time. You can't really see where because it's dark, but you just hit them. Yep. <laughs> Normally I just like look around with the jump indicator until it works, but uh, that time it, uh, it turned to death. <laughs> oh, I have to go kill him again. <laughs> wow, we get to kill just twice. Lucky day. All right, this is one of my favorite missions, if not my favorite mission. Coming up here, or <laughs> map. Sorry, lemons. <laughs> I always call them yeah. missions. I don't know why. <laughs> There's some fun things with this map. It's another one of the single map chapters, and it's really easy to go out of bounds here. There's so much oversight of where <laughs> the devs just ignored how much you could use mantling. This is where the whole ant lions, combs, like the hives come in. And the devs just make it so you can walk right over them. And basically anytime you go over them, yep. you can get out of bounds really quickly. Uh -oh. So you just avoid that and go through most of this map casually. Like, there's really not much of interest, honestly. Until you get to the end where... Actually, yeah. no. It's it's really just a casual map. <laughs> yeah, that's what I love about it. It's, it's like all movement. And some pretty precise puzzles. 
Um, hello? <laughs> I was not crouching low enough. <laughs> yeah, this guy you can avoid by just staying on the right side of the room for whatever reason. <laughs> Um, there. Um, okay. I thought I could jump down there. I could not. <laughs> um. These we can go really low and get around. <laughs> I don't like that guy. I like to use the SMG to quickly deal with those. Those are very annoying. So we gotta turn this back so we can leave the room again. Gotta crouch really low. And that's the mission. Whew. We have a another big battle yeah. uh, in this in this coming area. Um, <laughs> once again, we will be uh, speeding through it. <laughs> I mean, one thing you'll another thing you'll notice throughout the game is it goes with like normal time of day so really as as you progress through the game further in the day you get you start early morning like 11 a.m around here it's 9 p.m which you can notice because it just gets darker and darker it's really cool because you get to see all the shading it's amazing how much can just happen in one day of just anything, really. So, uh, there's a way to do shotgun ammo with the three bullets in one hand. It is pretty difficult compared to the other method. Uh, I'm going to try it here to get a little bit- oh! Get a little bit more ammo. There we go. There we go. Shotgun is going to be my best weapon coming up in the, like, last mission. So I can use as much ammo as I can get. Yeah, unfortunately you can't duplicate more than one shotgun bullet at a time, so, like, with that group of three I can't duplicate it normally. Uh, sometimes you actually just, like, lose the ammo if you try to do it that way. Which is annoying. But uh, yeah, you can do single shotgun bullets, which is what I was doing earlier. Uh, so we have a cool skip coming yeah, up here. Yeah, we'll get to dismantling more. Oh. <laughs> and go onto a ledge that you can just teleport from on the porta potty. And then skip the whole part where you're in the toxic pit or whatever. And then once again, skip the bridge by just teleporting onto the porta potty that you're supposed to take. Instead of just going into it. Uh, there we go. So, they just skip the whole bunch there. By getting the grenade from earlier, yep. Please you work. can explode the second boom room without <laughs> having to shoot the lock. So that's another thing where you don't have to backtrack for. Which is very fun. cool. And here's the big yep. fight scene you're talking about. Normally there's a ton of yeah. lines, combine, <laughs> it's got everything here. Where if you just run through, they'll still spawn, they're set on a timer. So this one you're kind of stuck. And the faster you get through this puzzle, the sooner you can deal with everything. Um, Even if you don't have to... If you don't have to deal with all the things, but first, let's go through all the puzzles. Yep. 
So uh, coming up here is my least favorite mission. <laughs> <laughs> or map. <laughs> Every time I say mission, uh, Lemons gets angrier. <laughs> Yeah, I'm furious right now. <laughs> There's smoke coming out of my ears. Is that bad? <laughs> Here's a... What in the world? The grabber thing is stuck behind a wooden plank always. It's really annoying because if you look really closely, you'll notice it. And it's like stuck to the red wire, but... No one ever notices it. And I think that's just it's bad game design in my opinion here. Yeah, this took me forever to figure out casually. Yeah. <laughs> uh what is happening? There we go. <laughs> Alright, folks. We're so sorry about the technical difficulties. Jeff got a little angry, and we were, we're work, we were working to fix that. But we are back. Sorry, Ari. Take it away. All right. We'll be starting in three, two, one, go. Before the issues, yeah. Taking a lot is, of damage. This area is just kind of saturated with combine. You gotta avoid all the all the blood they're shooting as you normally do. Just go through the map. Gotta get to the top of this water tower. To bring down the vault because the Vortigaunts that we saw earlier took down all the rest of them, and now it's just being held up on backup power. Oh no, that was very bad. I think I am going to die. You got this. <laughs> You're good at the game. <laughs> okay, well, we did make it through. <laughs> was, uh, not ideal. <laughs> so, these guys can still shoot you if you, like, stand up tall, so I'm gonna be, like, crouching. Because <laughs> uh, I don't want to die, and my health's pretty low. <laughs> Here, all you have to do is just flip all the levers as fast as you can because we just need to hit some dialogue triggers. You could, you could, in theory, do it really slowly as long as you hit each trigger as it's being hit or as the other one ends. You're, you should be good, but the more, the more inputs you have, the more chance you have to get it at a good time. Yeah, you actually, like, don't despawn for a while, so if I stood up, I could still get hit. <laughs> now I can stand up. <laughs> so this is one of my favorite parts. <laughs> Very cool section here. Uh, let's just hope that I don't get that weird hand glitch. Uh, I'll, pr I'll be prepared for it, though. <laughs> yeah, here... It's trying to get you over what just happened. The vault came down. It's going to give you some up close. We're not going to look at it because sightseeing is for casual players. Just, we just run sure. through as fast as we can. And we don't even listen to the funny dialogue that's normally here. Instead, we're just going to kill everything. There's a the glitch. Oh boy. That glitch is very obnoxious. Um. Electrical puzzles here. And turning on the elevator just activates the strider for some reason. I don't know how, but this is the start of the boss battle. 
arguably the most fun part of the game. Right behind Jeff, in my opinion. In most people's opinion, I don't know why it's mine. Oh my goodness, chat, chat, chat. We're we're haunted by Jeff today. <laughs> Thank you so much for your patience. We promise we're getting we've gotten everything fixed. Thank you so much for sticking around. Stariari, once again, it's up to you <laughs> to save us. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> we're back for one last time. <laughs> Uh, three, two, one, go. Oh. So, uh, if you missed anything, we have woken up a strider, uh, and now we have to kill it. And then the thing with strider, you're immune to just normal guns, so you have to find something bigger. Grenade, still much, shotgun, yep. SMG, pistol, none of that works. We'll need something yep. bigger. I'm not gonna find it without running a whole bunch. So, we gotta run through this. We're gonna see some combine here, but we're faster than them. Most of them, at least. Oh my gosh. <laughs> a little bit of danger there, but that's why I took so much health. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool movement section here. Yeah, getting through this fight is whole big thing if you don't have all enough meds. You need to have enough health. Oh hey look a big meds gun. For the future, then. Oh wow, a big gun. Funny enough, Ari is one of probably one of the best things in the game because this gun is really finicky, but it seems to have pretty much mastered it. Pretty much, almost. And there we go. Even to me it's kind of impressive. Just how fast they can shoot us. Um, here we can use use some not really finished <laughs> invisible walls if we don't die. I saw the boots and then my hands. Once we don't die. <laughs> okay. Luckily, auto saves are pretty cool. Yep. Um, there we go. Good job. <laughs> and now it's just kind of going through the whole chapter. Into the vault. Thing. And there go all my weapons. Oh no. <laughs> when I played this the first time, I was uh I was all chilled up for that. <laughs> I was like, "Oh no." <laughs> this last mission is really cool. Uh, a lot of cool areas and uh some interesting gameplay. Yeah, this map is mostly just really pretty and how well it uses this is really showing off the physics engine, because so much of the gravity will just change just on a dime. Like some rooms it'll just be upside down, some rooms it'll be sideways, and some rooms will just be really pretty. And some rooms will just have everything. Like this room has sideways physics, and then you walk through the door and it's upside down. Yeah, this area is so cool. <laughs> this guy's on a timer. We don't like him. Yeah. I have to wait for him so I can get down there. He just stuck there. Once you get through there, you can... For some reason, triggering the whole cutscene, you just gotta look at the bread on the merchant. And that just... That starts the whole cutscene in pretty much the next room. Okay. Go through the floor. Sometimes this is finicky. Like a whole tiny little part. Yeah. There we go. 
You go through the floor, you put the bread on the... Or you look at the bread, and then all the ashtrays just start floating towards the door. It's kind of funny. Wait, do I have to look at something? Oh, I have to look at oh, the yeah, bread. Okay, I didn't even know that. <laughs> there they go. <laughs> There's one of the ashtrays. And then you gotta look at the door until it opens. Yep. Once. Just have to look at everything. First, with the trigger in this game. Yep. Kind of funny. You can uh, help the ashtrays to their destination, which is pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, my friends. And here we're introduced to a new kind of game. thing. We get the Vortigons. We can become the Vortigons and just run energy at the Combine. It's really fun because every Half-Life game ends out on some kind of like pretty much god mode ending. And it's always really fun. Like Half-Life 1, you get the glue on gun. You feel awesome whenever you can just basically just launch everything to oblivion in half a second. Uh, is that all? Uh, yeah. Yep. This is the grenade room. Yeah, this is <laughs> honestly probably the most annoying room in the game. And it's right at the end of the run. <laughs> just, just timing all the grenades right and then hitting the combine. Yep. It gets painful. We get through it, and then we win. Oh, there's one still there. That guy's still there? Nice. And then three here. It's pretty much the end of the run. It's just getting to that final part. Yep. One more loading screen, and then we'll let you know when time is coming up. Yeah, playing with the electricity is really fun. <laughs> it's so fun. But, man, that grenade section is not it. <laughs> Very infuriating. If your run gets all the way there and then you lose. Okay, so this glass in front of me is going to shatter and when it does. Uh, that will be time, so just wait for that. Yep. Once the second pulse comes out. Pretty much. And... You gotta grab them again. Time. GG. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I grabbed them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's uh that's Half Life Alex. The rest of this is just cutscene. Um Impressive work. Yeah, uh, Lemons, do you have anything to Not add? Really. <laughs> just, just good game, really. <laughs> Really fun game. Yeah, this game is awesome. It's <laughs> it's magical. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, behind the VR limitation, but uh, <laughs> if you have access, hopefully one day we'll yeah, get if you have access out. to a VR set, highly highly recommend playing this game. It is awesome. Uh, I I never looked back. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I'm Sorry Ari. Uh, you can find me at twitch.tv slash Sorry Ari. Sorry underscore Ari. And um, I sometimes play this game. I sometimes play Paper Mario for the Nintendo 64. And uh, I sometimes play Overwatch 2. That's what I do. Uh, Lemons, how about you? Yeah, I really... I don't really do a whole lot of content creation. Really the only thing there is is my YouTube, which... 
YouTube.com slash lemons runs two M's. Or just lemons underscore underscore on Twitter. But, but if you wanna if you have any questions about the run anything, discord.gg slash source run. We're under the source two category. And that's all the Half-Life Alex stuff. And soon to be Counter-Strike 2, if speedrunning for that ever goes anywhere. Should be pretty fun. I mean, I, I don't know. I think I think well, you've made a really good case for running this game. I say some without a VR headset. <laughs> but no, it, it's been fascinating watching you go through. Thank you so much, Ari and Lemons, for for showing off Half Life Alex for us. <laughs> yeah, of course. Folks, please go check them out uh, if you've been interested in any of this at all. Stick around, we've got some more amazing runs coming up for you here at Speed Stuff for Trans Lives 2.